let's talk about it. Hello and welcome back to Thick Radio, the podcast where we take a deep dive into gainer culture and everything in its orbit. I'm James. And I'm Tim. Let's get into it. Today we're joined by a special guest. You know them, you love them. It's Sam. Yay! Hello! How are you? Very good, very good. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, good, good. We're so glad you're here. Uh, how, how is it in Florida today? It's beautiful as always. Uh, I moved here from Los Angeles about a year ago. A lot of people still know me as being Southern California based, but now I'm Florida based and I went from grade A weather to grade A plus weather in my opinion. Oh, I just came back from Florida and I wish that I was still there. It's beautiful. It's, it's beautiful all the time. I mean, I don't know what to say. I mean, I'm sure one day I'll, I'll hit that hurricane or something, but who knows? We'll, Fingers crossed. What part of Florida are you in? I'm in the I'm in the gayest city in America, Wilton Manors, Florida, which is just just a, a right up above Fort Lauderdale, but I've been uh, there. the most gays per capita in the United States. We're a very small town, but very 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 gay. <laughs> I mean, as an Australian, I've, I've been told by Americans, if I were to relocate, it would be best suggested that I go to Florida because apparently the, the biomes, the weather, the beaches is very similar to Australia. And I do miss good beaches living here in the UK. I've been very much traumatised by the beaches here. Oh. I am guilty of living here one year and not yet going to the beach. I'm a pool person and my complex has a lovely pool that I use so much. I, I will go to the beach very soon. I just being from Southern California where we have beaches also, it's so much of a hassle to go to the beach in Los in the Los Angeles area. There's, there's the parking and the packing and the everything. Whereas here it seems a lot more casual, but I just have to shake the, the, the heavy load thought that I, I have from, from living in California. Um, here, they, they have easy parking. It's a lot less of a walk. People just go for 30 minutes. So I need to get on that here. Love that, love that. So, Tim, what are we talking about today? Uh, today, we're talking about what it is like to travel when you are a larger person and all of the things that are a part of that. Mm. So, I mean... This is one of those things where I do feel like a lot of chubs and a lot of gainers make the sort of joke where they're like, oh, well, I'm a homebody. I got fat because I love to be on the couch. I'm not much for traveling. And like, I get that. You want to make sure that your home lived life is an enjoyable one. But a bitch also loves to travel. (laughs) She likes to go to places, see things, do things. And Sam, you're very well known for being someone who's been all around and done so much. Well, yes, that's actually how it started. I mean, in addition to going to a lot of the the lovely Gainer Encourager and Chub Chaser events that are put on by various promoters, you know, all essentially, you know, sort of pool party, long weekend type events, I would sit in various hospitality lounges or by the pool and, and just sort of talk to new people. And typically travel would come up and I would say, oh, I, you know, I went here recently. I went there recently. And over, I would say four or five years of going to events and just chatting with new friends, I got tired of people just saying, how did you make that work? You're, you're big, you're quite big. Um, so a light bulb finally went off a few years back saying, you know what? I hear travel agents are kind of on the comeback, especially for niche markets and, and, the, and the younger community um, why not take a stab at being a travel agent that just knows all the ins and outs of traveling as a large person? And I even hone that down. I really kind of hone in on the, the, the large gay male community because I know them very well. I'm part of them. I, I go to all, almost all the events that I can. I mean, COVID put a, a pause on that, but I have great memories from before and I plan to make great memories going forward so that's 
that's how it got started. And I was surprised at how people that are even two thirds my size thought, oh, I can't travel internationally or I can only go where Southwest Airlines flies or, or I don't even know if I can fly. And, and I, that really frustrated me because, you know, it may not be as easy at 400 pounds as it is to, you know, skirt off to, across the country as it is for somebody who's 180 pounds, but it's absolutely not impossible. And that's what I wanted to squash is that notion that, and it really was, there's no magic number. People just think at, they can't do something. And, and, you know, I've yet to have a client that I couldn't get from A to B. Of course, there's planning, extra planning and extra, extra, you know, preparation. But yeah, essentially, I just got tired of people thinking they can't do this. I love that. And that's such a, such a really important I think backbone to what any one of us tries to do when it comes to being plus sized, because so much of what the world tries to tell us is that we cannot or that we should not. And so even just by the virtue of what you're doing, you really are kind of sticking it to that and encouraging people to say, not only uh, can you, but you also should, you should go and use your holiday and, and have a good time. And yes, plan ahead where needs to be considered, but make allowances for that. It, it makes me want to ask, because as a gainer, you weren't always this size. Have you traveled at smaller sizes as well as larger sizes? The funny thing was about 10 or 12 years ago, I was a, a normal quote unquote sized adult. Mm -hmm. And actually, I did not travel. I was a workaholic. Um, I mean, I traveled here and there, but I really caught the travel bug when I got larger. Um, so I, I have some recollection, especially as a teenager and 20-something, of taking short little trips to see family and whatnot and thinking nothing of it. And then as as I got bigger, I, I, I sort of am naturally a planner, right. which I take for granted. Because that's what I realized is just because I want to travel from A to B, I watch YouTube videos on the different airplanes I might be on and their seating accommodations. I watch a YouTube video on the hotel, the hotel room, the hotel bathroom. I watch a video on the train or the, the car or the boat or the cruise ship. I love to do all this homework. And I guess I just assumed everyone does. And I was wrong. So when I start going off like Rain Man on how many inches wide a seat is on a certain airline's aircraft in a certain row, you know, people kind of smile and nod, but I, I've lost them. So that's, that's kind of where I come in is, is, yes, it's more work as a bigger person and the bigger you are, the little bit more work there is. But I guess I found I like doing that homework. And that was sort of my my gotcha moment. I was like, well, I can, I can help other people. Cause I mean, I already have a lot of it in my old noggin, but I, I, I don't have a problem spending a couple hours, Google image searching, YouTube video watching to, you know, make myself or someone else able to get from A to B in the easiest way possible. You were just preaching the dream to me there a minute ago, you know, getting what? big and traveling and like, God, if I could just, you know, reach my, my soft goal, uh, to travel to all the tropics, get a delicious golden tan and just hang out on every beach and enjoy life. Like, ah, uh, that is end goal for my life at some point. Well, that is, I mean, that's, <clears throat> and everyone deserves that. Everyone deserves to go where they want to go. Some people are the Caribbean tropic people. Some people want to tour the Arctic Circle and everything in between. And I've yet to find a true set in stone red light for anyone that this won't work. Obviously, I'm not climbing Mount Everest. So there are things we can't do and things we shouldn't do and things that most people don't want to do. But I'll, 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 I'll get you to Nepal. <laughs> I'm just not climbing a mountain. I'll settle with Machu Picchu. I'd like to see that before. Yeah. I insert gain a joke about like, oh, I'll instead of Machu Picchu, what about Machu Pizza? Like, uh... <laughs> dad mean, jokes. Really, we're going dad jokes. Thank, I mean, listen, it's it's part of the brand. You know, I've I've given myself this fashionable goatee. 
if I don't give you like uh, internalized homophobia and like uh, notes on construction work, am I even giving you the dad vibe? <laughs> um, <laughs> You're such I, a dork. Thank you. I, I actually do want to ask, Sam, um, as you said, so many people just sort of assume, no matter what size they are, that there are those limitations of like, oh, well, I can't do that. But you do say that there is some extra homework that people should be kind of considering. For the people who are listening who maybe don't have any clue what that might be, can you give us an idea of like, what are some things that people, depending on the size, might want to start looking into when it comes to planning some kind of trip? Well, the first thing I ask, and it is a little bold, is I ask, and I usually share the my own information, my height, weight, and clothing size, but I ask, honestly, what is your height? What is your weight? What is your pants or trouser size? Mm-hmm. And do you wear them across the belly or under the belly? Because I need to know that as st- essentially step one. Um, I mean, that's not exactly, I mean, there's also mobility questions and whatnot, but just to get you there on the plane or the train or, or, or the ferry or whatever, I need to know your shape. Um, because, the, you know, what, what we see, especially for air travel is, I mean, obviously you, you could do two coach seats. That's very easy on a budget airline that can be just twice the price. But what I found recently, and it still shocks people is if you're just a little bit flexible on day and time, we can probably find you a premium cabin seat that is just, just the right size for you. I mean, granted, they're only about three to four inches wider, but they do cradle sort of perfectly that three, four, 500 pound person very well. And it's less than the price of two coach tickets because in, again, back to Southwest airlines, they will give you that free second seat. They're technically the only airline that's going to make it that easy for you. So if you are going somewhere exotic, AKA not a Southwest airlines destination, um, don't rule out a premium cabin. So many people just think out of my price range without even looking. Um, so, I mean, that, that's a, that's a big thing is knowing your shape and size. There are people that are too big, even for first class seats. And that's okay. Then we go back to two coach seats. Uh, again, I have helped people significantly larger than me. I am 5'10", 500 pounds currently. Um, I fit very snugly in 90% of premium, uh, cabin seats. Um, but we have helped people larger than me with two, economy seats and special boarding privileges and making sure they're on the aircraft with a larger handicap ish restroom if it is a long flight the list goes on and on but yes the first question is getting to know you your shape what you can do how long you can hold a pp for the flight <laughs> there's just there's a lot of questions i like to ask i like to get very familiar with people and then we can use the amazing tool of the internet to literally take out any surprise because when you're traveling plus size, you don't want surprises. Surprises sound lovely. It's a surprise birthday party. Yay, gay. No, not when traveling. We <laughs> want to know everything. We want to know everything. We want to have seen pictures and videos of the plane, of the ground transportation, of the hotel, of everything. Because where surprises are lovely sometimes, oh, surprise, they accidentally sent a, another pizza. Uh, not traveling we want to know everything that's that we're gonna that, that we're gonna see and, and sit in and sit on and lay down in and shower in etc that makes perfect sense i mean the the purpose of a holiday at least for me i know some people love to go on the holiday where they're like oh let's go to the mountains and let's go hiking and let's do this whole shebang me i'm very like no no, no i'm here to relax i am here to enjoy myself and i'm not going to enjoy stressing about is the ticket booked do we know that there's going to be a bathroom on board? Is there meals provided? You know, like you can't be leaving things to chance. You need to know that at whatever point mama needs what she's going to need, I I can get it. And if I'm not going to be able to get it, I need to know that so I can take care of it beforehand or after if that's going to be the case. So. Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and again, depending on who I'm working with, they don't need to know everything. I do. Um, it depends, do you want to know everything or do you want to just know it's going to be okay? Because, mm. I, or anything in between. I'm happy, again, like the Rain Man to spout off exactly how many inches and fractions of inches your seat's going to be, or I can just tell you you're going to be okay. Uh, wow. we've, you know, 
follow my basic instructions or plan or just the, the itinerary, if you will, and you're going to be fine. Um, yeah, that's just, again, up to the person. How much do you really want to know or do you just want that? It's going to be good. That's like, I wish that I had known a few things ahead of time when I took my trip just recently because I was telling Stanham about my flight down to Florida and the fact oh. that I had to connect in North Carolina and <clears throat> not really looking into what the flight was going to be like. You know, so I was flying American, so I thought, eh, you know, they're one of the best airlines out there. Yeah. I don't think there should be a problem. You know, I get on there and I think we always took off at Charlotte. like... <laughs> Sorry. You know, on American yeah, well, had I known that, Charlotte. had I known that, I would have because you know we get on the flight now, you know we get up to cruising speed, and I'm like, where's the drink cart? Where's the snack cart? Like, what's going on? Like, I'm thirsty. I could use a snack. Like, nope, nothing. We're not doing that. Okay, we're not even going to acknowledge it. All right, whatever. <clears throat> get off the airplane in Charlotte, and every fucking thing is closed. Every last place, and I'm walking from one end of the airport all the way to the other. I've got my boyfriend with me. I've also got my 84-year-old grandmother who I'm pushing in a wheelchair, <laughs> and we're passing everything that's closed, and I'm like, I'm so fucking thirsty. <laughs> get on the next flight, get up to cruising speed, still no drinks, no snacks, nothing. I'm like, oh, God, by the time I landed, I was so pissed. Yeah, American, all the airlines have their COVID rules right now. And on American, it just comes down to miles. Um, so you were obviously two, uh, two shorter flights. Yeah. Um, I avoid Charlotte like the plague mostly. And this is so silly, but Charlotte was a U.S. Airways hub. And when American acquired U.S. Airways and their fleet of older aircraft, they mostly kept those aircraft on the routes through Charlotte. So... My rule of thumb is if you want to fly an old plane with no power and no TV, you go through Charlotte. Hmm. And I like my power outlets and my television. Lesson learned. So better shot, avoiding Charlotte, go through Dallas. There you go. This is this is that exact thing that you were saying of a bitch knows what she knows. She researches. Yep. This is that understanding. And it kind of gives me that sense of, yes, you're a travel agent, but I almost get more of that personal assistant kind of a vibe, that person who knows the route and they've got the backlog of the information and they can pull things out when and where you need them. I think that's so useful and so handy to know. I am curious for people who, whether they're plus size or becoming plus size, like there are some concerns about what facilities are available to plus size people. But for example, you and I talking about a cruise, you know, there's facilities for people with CPAPs and people who yeah have full wheelchair access you know things that i never would have even considered anywhere near possible because i'm like oh this is such a huge inconvenience for most modern things how on earth could there be considerations but there are what are some things that we're missing when it comes to that like okay what common- let me tell you cpaps number one and it really frustrates me how many people don't know this is if you you know when you get your cpap it comes with a little travel bag and everything whether or not Okay, that doesn't count as far as a carry-on. So if you are on a budget airline, which is going to charge you per carry-on or only allow you one, the CPAP never counts. Right. They will not open it. They will take your word for it. Say CPAP, say medical equipment. I would even say put that in a slightly larger bag, slip a couple personal items in there. It's still a medical bag. Um, I have friends that they're, you know, they love to fly Spirit Airlines and Spirit is... And they're really good at packing a backpack that is a personal item. That's their two or three days worth of stuff. However, the CPAP comes in and they pay for that to be a carry-on. That's, I mean, they're not going to stop you from giving the money, but you need to tell them at the gate, this is a medical equipment. It's a CPAP. You know, you can even open the zipper a little bit. They don't care. Um, I always carry mine on. That's number one is stop paying to transport your CPAP. You legally don't have to. Um, Additionally, uh, the, the funny thing, if you're on a very long flight, which you have to sleep on and you have to use your CPAP and don't be afraid of the stigma. I was the first time I flew a very long time. I was like, wait, somebody's going to walk by me, go to the bathroom, think plane's going down because I'm wearing an oxygen mask. It's fine. The, store, the, the flight attendants have seen it. Who cares what the passengers think? It's the middle of the night. Nobody's walking around anyway. Just is yours the full mask? I, I, I used to just stay up all night on my long overnight flights because I didn't want to use my CPAP. No, it's fine. Um, but also then make sure your plane has power. Most of them do now. 
especially if it's an overnight flight. But I can double, I can double and triple check that you are in a seat with appropriate power. Um, on cruise ships, they're just awesome because depending on who makes your CPAP, it might not have the longest board in the world. Additionally, a lot of cruise ship rooms will only have power outlets in one central location, usually by the desk. And uh, I personally make sure that my people always are noted appropriately on the reservation so that typically when they arrive in their room, there is a gallon of distilled water, an extension cord that is roughly one to two miles long, uh, and, uh, and even a, a, a power duplicator sometimes uh, that it looks like it is from a 1980s construction site. Um, so it's all, it's just making sure you get ahead of things. And I can't stress that enough, uh, whether it's anything with travel, when somebody else needs to do something, whether it's a gate agent having you pre-board because you don't want to bump people with your belly or your butt going down the aisle. Um, it's getting ahead of things and being proactive. Get to the airport early, talk to anybody that will listen to you just to let them know what you're going to need. If you sit there and, and just helpless, you'll probably still get somewhat accommodated, but you're gonna give all us big guys kind of a bad name um, and make them not wanna help you in the end. And you might not get accommodated, I don't know, but that's what I can't stress enough is the proactivity. If it's a, if it's a wheelchair needed, if it's a scooter, whatever you need or you have or your thoughts are, communicate them ahead of time. Um, and then it's, everybody will have the best outcome. Um, I'm going to probably hammer down on that at least once or twice more. It's the proactivity <laughs> and the don't be embarrassed. They can see you're fat. You're not hiding it. So just let them know, hey, I'm on this flight. This is what I've done. Is it correct? It's not. Help me make it correct. I'm so sorry. I, you know, I'm here to learn. Because a lot of these policies change quickly, too. So the policy when you booked may not always be the exact policy when you fly, when you cruise, et cetera. Cruising, especially right now, policies are changing by the day with COVID. So that's kind of a separate issue. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, the proactivity is so important. I was going to say, like, if you're even, if, if you're not going to be like flying, if you even want to do something like say camping, cause I like to go camping. Um, I always, cause I have a CPAP as well. And uh, if I go to a campground, I have to book a site that has um, electrical access and, yeah. and then just bring my own extension cord. And like, I can't camp at places that have no electricity because I've looked into a few and they're like, no, we don't have electric sites. And unfortunately I have to rule that out. But, <clears throat> and like you were saying about taking them on planes, like, you know, I've always carried mine straight on, no problems. I was curious though, do you have like the full face, like the full face mask CPAP? I am full face. And okay. I, I've only done it once. It was a, it was a, it was a 10 PM to 8 AM New York to Barcelona. And I just, I wanted to sleep. I, I wanted, cause we had a plan to do, to, you know, you get on the ground at eight or nine in the morning in these East coast U S to Europe flights. And you don't want to go to, you can't get in your hotel at eight in the morning. So yeah. you drop the bags but you want to explore the city. I didn't want to be a zombie. Was it the greatest sleep of my life? Absolutely not. But I banged a couple hours and I don't got the, uh, meeting. I've got the nasal pillows one. So I feel like that one might not raise as many alarms. as like, because I can understand what you were saying about a full thing <laughs> over your mouth and nose does look like the oxygen tanks that fall out yep. of the ceiling. But like the nasal pillow, people might just walk me like, like what, what the hell is that? And keep going. You know, you know I, what? It, do, it doesn't matter what they think. They can ask the flight attendant, what the hell is that guy doing? The flight attendant understands it. But again, I noticed everybody around me was asleep and I don't think any, and I, I wasn't particularly close to the restroom or any high traffic route. So I don't think anybody really walked by me, but uh, you know. Well, that's fair. I need to, uh, I need to get a sleep test done actually, uh, because I'm pretty sure I'm in need of a CPAP. So uh, I guess we'll see whether I end up with the, with the full covering or the, uh, or the nasal pillows, um, you know, to, to kind of put things in a more esoteric kind of a way. I love the point that you made where you said, you know, you're going to get to the gate. They can see that you're fat. There is no denying that you are fat. So there's no point in trying to hold yourself or act or conduct yourself in a way where it's like, oh, I don't know. And yeah, like, no, just 
own the fact that you're a fatty and be like, I need pre-boarding or I need to consider this or I need to ask this question. Like, I think there is something to kind of put it in a way, like kind of owning your size in that moment that maybe if we did that a little bit more, maybe there would be less delicacy or delicateness around how to treat and conduct around plus size people. And, you know, even if you're on the shyer side, you're doing this already because unless you've never gone out to a restaurant and, and had to have that quickie little, oh, I don't think that booth's going to work. Or do you have a, we've all done this at some point somewhere. The restaurant's just a very easy example, but there's, there've been, you know, on a, in, on a bus where you kind of have to give, somebody's going to see, oh, maybe I don't want to sit next to you because there's not a lot of second seat left. It's not a big deal. It really isn't. Um, get over it unless you, you know, this is all to make your travel experience better. You paid for it. Just, uh, just stay ahead of it. Um, you know, I, I, I can't say, I, again, I can't stress that enough that, you, you know, you don't have to put on a show and, you know, I'm, you know, you can if you want. And I've, I've, I've seen people do that, but just, you know, it's, you'll find, especially in travel, that the employees are very discreet. When I ask for a seatbelt extender, most of the time, 90% of the time, you'll see the flight attendant hand it to you in their hand with their palm down so as to be discreet about it. That is a training tool that is every airline. Um, I don't care. You can, you can, you know, scream and shout that you're giving me one. Um, but that's just an example of, of what the travel industry is trained to do with customers of size, which seems to be the popular term nowadays. Um, so uh, yeah, again, it's all, if, if, if you're really hesitant about that, it, it's in your head, just try to shake it a little bit at a time. You, again, you don't have to put, you know, parade up to, to the podium and say, I'm fat, what, what do I get? Just, 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 you know, maybe wait till there's no queue, no line um, or, 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 ask the person next to the podium by the door just get a communication going it sounds good and you know all of this to say as you say it's kind of culminated you are now a travel agent you actually own your own business uh, a company called travel at large which you can find at travel at large.net uh, <laughs> ding, ding. <laughs> exactly ding I'll, I'll put the little ding sound effect right there um, <laughs> that's travel at large.net ding uh, what what inspired you to want to make that an actual business? So as you say, you liked helping people. You liked kind of giving that. What made you say, oh, I'm going to make this a thing? I wanted to help people, first of all. And I wasn't sure how I can really turn that into a, an occupation. That's when I sort of did research on professional travel agents, who, by the way, a travel agent really shouldn't, be charging their client anything what we do is we get kicked we get commission from the cruise lines the hotels not the airlines however you know uh typically when you when i book somebody a flight there's also a hotel rental car or cruise involved so that that's how i pay my rent um but uh but that's again what people don't realize is travel agents don't cost anyone anything they just they're just there to do all the heavy lifting for you so that, that's what I sort of realized over time in about 2018 or, uh, yeah, 2018 is I realized, you know what, that's the best way to do this and to help people in the best way is to just one by one get going on organizing their travel, keep learning more about, you know, the new, the new planes, the new ships, the new policies, everything, and just help people one by one. Just you got to start somewhere. I must say, I have never used a travel agency before to book a vacation, but you convinced me that I should really look into it because I've always done the hassle of doing it all myself. And it's just, yeah, it is a big pain in the ass. And that's the not flight, really a vacation, the hotel. It? it's, it's schoolwork. Yeah. So, I mean, I will be looking up your company. <laughs> no, I appreciate it. It is, you know, and some people love the schoolwork and, you know, I see them on cruise ships. They've got their Excel sheets printed out on paper with everything they're going to do every minute of every day. God bless them. I think they're having fun with that. If that's not you, 
And no, that is yeah, not me. If you're that is not, not me. bringing the accordion folder with all your printed emails and everything and killing the trees, <laughs> that's when you should, you know, reach out to me because, you know, I'll, I'll, I can do as little as, hey, your cruise is booked and the rest is up to you or, or you know, <laughs> or we can go all the way where you make no decisions and just know that I've made an amazing plan for you, which I have people that are like that too. They're like, you know what, just get me on the ship and, and I will place. Day, I'm good. I will place my next great vacation into your capable hands. <laughs> it's um, it's funny you say that because to put it out there, you're coordinating a uh, Grom of the Seas 2022, and I, it's going to be my first cruise, my first time in America, and I hadn't got the fucking first clue <laughs> on what was actually needed. My understanding of cruise cruises like prior to this was, oh gosh, they're like five to 10 grand a piece. It's going to be something you're only going to be able to do every couple of years. You have to save up and it's this whole thing. And because you'd originally approached me about it, like, oh, righty round. I was thinking to myself, oh God, this is going to be my life savings down the drain. But <laughs> when I actually looked at it, I realized, First of all, holy shit, this is very doable. Second of all, oh my God, like you don't have to have the whole kit and caboodle if you don't want the whole kit and caboodle. And when I was talking to you about, I don't even know the first thing I've got to do to get this whole thing sorted. You you had said to me, I will do as much or as little as you <laughs> genuinely want assistance with. And that felt wonderful because I'm thinking if I actually do want to like step away and say, ooh, the cruise isn't for me and maybe do a bit of my own research, I could do that and sort something else out on my own. Or if I decided, do you know what? Bugger everything. You just go and deal with it for me and tell me I'm going to have a good time. You said you were cool with that. And that feels so wonderful to know that no matter which way that goes, I know I'm going to have a great time. And there's also someone there who knows what's going on. So if that moment of panic, that light bulb starts flashing, going mayday, 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 there's someone I can defer to that knows what's happening. Well, yeah, I mean, that's so... I, I became a certified travel agent in 2018. And obviously the next day, it wasn't like a hundred people were asked me to book their vacations. Um, I've, I've been very, very active on Grommer since day one. Uh, since the first Southern California Grommer, I have organized everyone up until COVID. So that's uh, eight years, not, eight, nine, something like that. Um, and something just clicked. I was like, why? I mean, everyone had, ever since the dawn of the Gainer Encourager community and get-togethers, the joke has been made, why aren't we on a cruise ship eating everything? Uh, uh, but nobody really ever pulled the trigger. There was, a, I believe, an attempt made about 10 or 15 years ago following an expansion that was very small, but, but, but still, I think it still went off. Um, so I, I realized I had the tools as a travel agent to... Uh, with my favorite cruise line, Royal Caribbean, set up a group, get all the perks going. So it, it kind of just came together over a couple of days. And we, we landed on a quickie little five-nighter in February of 2019. We got 31 guys to come and it was, it was, it was a, a hoot and a half. But everyone basically said this wasn't long enough. I mean, almost just about everyone came, came up and said we need longer next time. And, you know, what is next time? So as soon as we got home from it, I started figuring out the, that, the 2020 cruise, which ended up being a seven night. And that seemed about just right about perfect for everyone. But, um, but you're absolutely right about just about everything is the great thing about cruising, especially with Royal Caribbean is we have Grommer guys that are young, that are on a budget, they're gonna put two, three, four guys in a very basic room, but they can participate in everything and still have their great vacation. Whereas we might have slightly more well-off grammar guys getting that suite, you know, doing all the extras, but everybody's on the same ship, literally. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's that's what cruising is is great at, is it, it suits just about any budget. Um, and then obviously with, with a group, you get extra benefits and lower prices. Um, and uh, it's, it, it just, it worked out perfectly. It's, it's, and this is not in any disrespect to any other Gator Encourager or Chub Chaser events, but it, it's really a perfect, almost autopilot event. The cruise, I mean, cruising is uh, an indulging, indulging, yes, experience anyway, 
we just kind of kick it up a notch as a group, you know, <laughs> you know, and, and nobody bats an eye. Uh, we, we often always get asked, are you some sort of a fraternity reunion, perhaps a rugby team, uh, football, <laughs> uh, and that's what's hilarious. Is I, lo- I love that the they, that of course, they're picking groups of men that they think would be rather large at this state in their life. <laughs> yes, you all yeah, were like and, and, and that, that also 10, 15 us, years ago. <laughs> yeah, and, and that also brings us back to one of the one of the concerns we get is, oh, wait, we're only 30 or 40 or 50 or coming up this year, 100. But still, the ship is 2,000 people and people sometimes get that in their head. Oh, no, I won't be able to do anything. I won't be able to hold my partner's hand. I won't be able to kiss him. We found we've never hit a snag with the general population. Um, Again, when 30 or 40 or 50 of us get in one of the pools, it kind of becomes our pool. Or, you know, that's why we kind of stick together with daily suggested activities of, you know, where the bulk of the group might be so that we can, we can, just feel comfortable with each other. And even if the, the, the whole event is just 30 guys, which I don't think it's ever going to be that low of a number again, but we'll see. Uh, we still, you know, it, 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 there's never been an issue with the general population. And then the other question we get asked is why don't you work with one of these full gay charters like Atlantis and be a subgroup? Well, the, the issue with that, we, 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 we figure is if, if, if some, older housewife bats an eye at you going to the buffet for a fourth time you're not going to care if some twink that's 19 gives you that little dirty look that might bug you for for the rest of the day so you know we love our gay community but we're not there yet as the full accepted level not even the chubs and chasers i mean the bears are just basically just barely sort of scratching the surface of acceptance but it'll be a minute or two before the, the really big guys are. So for now, we found it's just better to be on a predominantly civilian straight cruise with our group of 30 to 100. Um, and that hasn't proven us wrong. Well, I think there's maybe something to be said about that. And maybe this is a bit more of a political statement, but, you know, fat acceptance is certainly much more of a thing in the straight community than it is in the gay community. You're absolutely right. Which I is will be unfortunate. Com- I will be completely honest. I do not want to go on a cruise with nothing but other gay men. I have, I know people who have gone on them. I don't want to be on a floating bathhouse. I've spent plenty of times in bathhouses. I don't want to be on a floating one. I don't want to be surrounded by that many gay men and knowing that I can't get off the boat and that there's nothing I can do but put up with their their snide remarks and their derision. (laughs) I'm friends with a lot of cruise line crew members. And this is a fact is, when it's a full gay charter, the ship roughly goes through three times the normal amount of liquor and one third the normal amount of food. So those two piece, those two numbers will tell you something about who you're getting on a full gay charter. Mm-hmm. Um, and hey, I love my drinks too. And our group usually, a lot of us do drink a lot, but that one third of the food, that's kind of a scary thing. And that's maybe a, a whole different issue in the gay community, but... I mean, I think all of those things are really worth considering on like a macro level, because like I say, body positivity is so much more a thing in the straight community. And sometimes I think, yes, we're gainers and there's the belief that we are predominantly gay, but also there are some elements in my life, and I'm sure we can all agree to this, when you exist at the intersection of several minorities, as a gay fat person... Sometimes I'm in more game mode than in fat mode, and I'm not thinking too much about overeating and wearing clothes that show off the body. But in some aspects of my life, I am much more in fat mode than I am in game mode. I am much more concerned about making sure I have enough to eat and feeling comfortable in my clothes, as opposed to particularly engaging in like a queer element. Do you know what I mean? So I think in the idea of a cruise like this, my mind is so much more, I want to know that the food's going to be good, that I'm going to have a great time, I'm going to relax. Like you say, I don't exactly want to be surrounded by individuals who might have snide remarks to make or might make my, I've paid for this cruise, I'm here on the damn cruise, I don't want some fool 
making my life a misery while I'm meant to be enjoying my holiday. I just want to come and indulge and have a great fucking time. You want to know something else I never want to have to see again? I don't want to be stumbling back to my cabin after getting drunk and seeing some tweaked out twink who has been rolling all night long and who has spent the last eight hours trying to decorate the front of his door. I don't want to have to see that shit again. Like, that's just not fun. Oh, my God. (laughs) Oh. Yeah, I mean it's uh, everyone loves a twink, but yeah, sometimes when they're yeah, no, no, I, I got you. I'm not gonna. I, I'm you know what I'm talking about. You've seen it too. Mouth, You've seen it too. You know when no. they've been hitting the pipe and they decided, <laughs> oh, I just I can't get the oh. decoration quite right. I don't need to go through that again. And but uh, what James said about picking if I'm gonna be a, I mean, you essentially said, you know, for the next thirty minutes, am I gonna be the fat guy or the gay guy? kind of have to pick i found that completely true when i lived in southern california but either it was a me thing or an environment thing when i moved here to wilton manors i said i'm merging the two fuck it Mm. um so i go out with my civilian friends because i I don't really i I have a couple of brommer type friends in south florida none of them are really super close Mm. miami basically so 45 minutes south but I, i i just came all the way out. I figure I'm, you know, 2,800 miles away from, you know, family, et cetera. So I, I told my friends, like, yeah, no, I'm, I'm fat. I might get fatter. I don't really care, but I don't, I don't want to lose any weight. Um, I, I dropped the terms. I don't think it means anything to them, gain or an encourager. Some of them asked to know more. And some of them have to explain a few times every couple months, um, you know, uh, the, about the cruises, about everything. Especially, it's hard for the civilians to really wrap their head around the difference between chub chasers and gainer encouragers, uh, which I get. Uh, but it's, I have no problem explaining it, but it, it's really interesting. And I don't know if I'm the only one, because I know a lot of friends on Grommer, they switch between the fat guy and the gay guy, depending on who they're with. And I, I've merged them for the most part, and I, I don't really have any regrets on that. I so love- that's... Um, it, it does make me curious to ask. It's something we, I, I'm personally curious about because you arrange events like both the gain of crews, but you also do stuff for Chub Chasers in general. What is the major difference between the well, two? Is it just based we on- We did that first Grom of the season early 2019. And it was, it was we were all on such a high of it. There, there were no notes. I was asked and I respected it by, by the team at Merck to to stick with early in the year, January, February, but for the time, if, if I could only do it once a year, because there was a concern of having so many major events, this, the Grom, BRW, and Eurogrom, right. they just got, they got a little concerned, and that's fine, so I, I really wanted to do another group cruise, and then the light bulb went off, because I go to more Chub Chaser events on land than Gainer Encourager events, just because there are more, you've got your bigger Vegas, your Cannonball, your Tidal Wave, your convergence, if that's still happening, um, et cetera. I took the name Travel at Large and kind of spun off Cruising at Large uh, for the Chub Chasers. And we did our first Cruising at Large in fall of 2019. Again, we had about 30 guys. Um, and you know what? 95% the same feel. I would say the Chub Chaser Cruising at Large obviously peels back on the excitement around food and eating Mm -hmm. however the dinners were so you know plentiful and plenty of guys were getting two entrees two appetizers and as is typical with the chub chaser versus gainer encourager communities the uh the sexual uh uh uh, energy energy was a little bit more right um so so i basically just say when you go from grama the seas to cruising at large the food goes down a little bit, the sex goes up a little bit. That's about it. And what we see is is sort of a one-way crossover between the two cruising events, whereas it is very typical for a gainer and encourager to go to a chub chaser event, be it at land or at sea. So we see Grom of the Seas attendees on cruising at large. However, just in our two communities, we don't really see traffic going the other direction you don't see a chub or a chaser showing up at the grom or at brw because that's deeper down the rabbit hole for them and that's not where they're going 
So my rule of thumb is I'm happy to promote cruising at large to my Grom of the Seas people all day long, not so much the other way around. And that seems to keep everyone happy. I think a few gainers, because we, we do kind of know this, a lot of gainers tend to take umbrage with aspects of gainer culture being made uh, available to the public in a sense. How do you navigate that when creating a cruise like Grom of the Seas? Well, as, as we've seen, and as everyone knows, every gainer and encourager is sort of at a different position on their way out of the, the gainer encourager closet. They're all, so we often will have the more enthusiastic members of our crews say, oh, I want a t-shirt that says I'm a big, you know, I'm a big fat gainer pig, or I'm a sexy encourager that wants to make you fat. And, you know, that's obviously not appropriate, but you have to let them down a little bit easier saying, hey, you know, I'm not sure, you know, just a reminder, we're at best 5% of this cruise ship. Um, and then you've got the people that are very, you know, I don't, can't be in any pictures. So we accommodate everyone. What we do is, especially with pictures and group gatherings is if you need to take a step back, that's totally fine. There's no judgment. And then on the other end, we, you know, we, we remind our super enthusiastic guys, hey, you know, we, we have guys that just aren't quite here yet. So let's, let's try to all meet in the middle. And, and that's never actually been an issue. Um, again, the civilians on the ship just kind of, the ones that gather the courage to ask, don't even really ask who we are. They just say, oh, you're a rugby team, right? Or is it a fraternity? Is it a football team? Is it a family reunion? Um, so yeah, we've never we've never hit anything close to a big snag with that, you know, knock on wood, uh, which is which is great. I mean, like I said, we've been very lucky with our with all of our events that it's just everything's gone so smoothly. The cruise line does such a great job accommodating us, and you know, all of our needs or quirks. So um, it makes it look like I'm doing all this work, but it's really the cruise line that's the hero, I think. I've seen similar things happen with like when I go to leather events, um, some people are very um, hesitant to let people know that they're into the leather um, fetish. So like when the event photographer is going around, you know, he'll ask, is it okay to take your picture? Is it okay if it's going to go up on the claw board website, stuff like that. Um, though I think like, say for the gainer cruise, I mean, no one's really going to know what your group is. I mean, it's not as if you have a banner that says we're all a bunch of fatties trying to get bigger and we're going to eat all the food. Like there's no large sign hanging over anyone's head that says this person is a gainer. The, so I the, the people that who are... to print order is what you're saying. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure there are, there are gainers out there who would love that, who would yeah, revel no, 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 in that kind of public attention. You're so, absolutely but like, right. We're just... You know, people, the, the thing people notice the most is our positive energy. And, and it rubs off on the guests, on the crew, is we're just such a happy, jolly group, you know, not to make a stereotype, is everyone's just always having such a good time that it's impossible to notice anything but the incredibly positive energy. Um, now, like if you were all there in a bunch of, like if this was a leather thing and we were all there wearing, you know, leather regalia, they'd be like, obviously something would get to you know in their head because it's like there's something visual but there's really nothing to distinguish anyone on the gainer cruise from anybody else i mean there's plenty of big civilians who go on cruises so oh absolutely um although our guys we usually have the biggest of the cruise but <laughs> but um but no and especially i tell guys to just sort of gauge the the time of day in the venue so if we're in the late night after 10 p.m nightclub where even the civilian guests are being silly and you know maybe wearing funky outfits, wear that Grommer shirt that says get fat or something, people will think it's a hoot. Now, if you do that at 10 a.m. by the pool, maybe not. But, um, you know, we had some guys with funky shirts and, and all sorts of stuff. It's just using common sense. You don't have to hide who you are. We never want that. But it's just a common sense. And they can always ask me my opinion, you know, and I can, I, I'll give it to you. But I don't ever think we've censored anyone uh, at all or, or made somebody be not their whole selves. I believe this coming cruise, we have a couple people who like to wear the pup masks. And I think if, you know, again, not necessarily 10 a.m. on the pool deck, but late night in the disco, I think people would get a hoot out of that, even the, the, the civilians. 
Or, you know, if you're going to do a beach excursion, go to the farthest point of the beach, you know, walk way, way, way far away from everybody And that's else. always and, the, uh, on the beach destinations. That's always what I pick for the group is somewhere with the most privacy. I, I do want to ask, like, what do you think is the best piece of advice you could offer a gainer looking to travel, especially as COVID is, <laughs> fingers and toes crossed, uh, easing and travels being possible again? You know, the, the best piece of advice I can say other than, you know, email me is YouTube and Google everything. I mean, I can do that for you, but, you know, just, you know, you don't want a surprise. You want to be proactive and just do your homework or have someone do it for you. Um, you know, I just, there are gentlemen that are my friends that are even larger than I am that just say, I'm going here this weekend. I say, have you done this? I mean, no, I'm just going to go to the airport. They haven't booked a second seat. They haven't done anything. They just hope and pray it's all going to work out. And it might, but I, I try to tell people that's not the greatest idea. You want to be proactive and do that homework. I like that. I do want to ask, what do you see in the future for plus size gain travel, especially gainer specific events? The, the That's the way the gainer, working backwards, the gainer events are going to get bigger. No pun intended again. <laughs> uh, it, I, I believe off the top of my head, the, the record right now is about a, a 120 attendees. I think it was at BRW a couple of years back. But I think, especially with the urge to travel once COVID is finally fully squashed, we'll see it, definitely those first few events maybe hitting the 200 mark. I know as of today for Grom of the Seas in January of 2022, we have 81 booked uh folks and at the rate it's going there's no way it'll end up being less than 100 and we may even break the record but then i'm sure the the grom weekend of 20 of, of memorial day 2022 will just shatter everything i mean everybody wants to go to that that's going to be such so much fun everyone's so we'll itchy to get out after yeah being we're going to see the best two doing years. more and more people i mean obviously gainer encourager events will never hit the size of you know the Chub Chaser branch just because that's a, a more populous community. But, you know, we'll, we'll, we can make a bigger mark. We can take over larger hotels, you know, so we're going to see just better quality, bigger events, pro, you know, probably in, in a higher number. And, you know, we're going to see what, what I've seen over the last 10 years is even more, you know, respect when gainer encouragers want to wear that on their sleeve at Chub Chaser events. Even five to seven years ago, that was faux pas at a chub chaser event. You had to blend in as a, you know, a gainer had to masquerade as simply a chub and an encourager had to masquerade as simply a chaser. But now I, I've noticed in the last five years, that's not the case at all. I mean, obviously you're not wearing name tags that say what you are, but, you know, you're at the pool at a thousand person chub chaser event. You say you're a gainer, they're going to say, cool. You know, something that I would love to organize, but it looks like it's going to have to be next year because this year is COVID is still raging on and I've had a few financial issues come up. So, but I would love to organize like a fat camp kind of situation, like a gainers camping getaway. Um, I so, forget who asked me about that. I'll have to look it up. And, and But that, yeah, that has been brought up. Um, but yeah, get ready for lots of logistics. That's why I like the cruise. I know. The cruise line's <laughs> doing all the work. Oh, oh I know. Yeah. I know. I I think I might have to eventually chalk it up to like, if I can pull it off, be like, this is where it's going to be happening. And, you know, because like every time I go camping, it's like with friends, like they, they tell me where the campground's going to be and I just get there. And a I lot mean, of I times we end up. Huh? I would brand it as glamping, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely um, glamping. Yeah, we don't we don't rough it. <laughs> throw in the words luxury and stuff, but uh, but you've already done a lot of the homework yourself, making sure it's a place with power for the CPAPs. Yeah, they're it's usually probably- pretty small campgrounds. They all have pools. They all have oh, wow. you know, full on bathrooms and uh, hot tubs, and you know they even have cabins that you can rent. So. Oh my goodness, hot tubs! I'm sold. What am I? I'm yeah, this sounds, this sounds, <laughs> down to that. That's the thing is. When this other gentleman mentioned camping, I wrote him off immediately because I'm thinking what I had to deal with in like middle school with like sleeping on the ground, under a tent, freezing my my ass off, peeing in a bucket or something. Oh, hell no. I don't do that. Mm -mm. That's why I left Boy Scouts. I don't do that shit. 
No, man. What's the best time of year usually for, for the camping you do? Well, you know, I always, for some reason, pick the worst possible <laughs> month to go camping in, which is um, August. And August in uh, any part of the United States, you yeah. know, is like unbelievably hot, unbelievably humid. Um, but that just happened to be the time frame that I was usually free. I suppose, you know, maybe towards mid-September would be um, late enough that it's not going to be too hot, but it's not going to be cold yet. Or, you know, maybe earlier in the season, like mid-June. Yeah, because my my thing for, for, for picking dates has always been, and I'm such a nice guy, I'm like, I don't want to piss off another event, but we don't know other than the Grom and the Grom of the Seas and Euro Grom, we don't know if anyone else has survived COVID. Pure speculation. There's at least one Chub Chaser event and I think one Gainer Encourager event that I'm getting the sense might not come back, which hmm. opens up, you know, scheduling windows and whatnot. But, uh, but who knows? I'm not, I don't want to name names or anything, but I just know, hmm. you know, COVID kind of just made some organizers say, I'm, you know, I had a can, you know, I had to cancel event. I had to cancel two events. I'm, I may have lost some of my own money. I'm, I'm done. And, yeah. um, and I can't, you know, that's them. okay. Someone else will come up like you um, and fill, fill the void. And I think the, the idea that there could only be three or four gainer encourager events in a year is something that, that is, is, is no longer a thing yeah. because especially in the year or two following the end of COVID, there's going to be so much travel desire banked vacation time, et cetera, et cetera, that, you know, we'd be silly not to have a fifth event of the year or something, as long as it's not the weekend after another one. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. We do have a listener question. Uh, what was the most surprising thing you've had to consider when it comes to travel? I'm trying to think is it's, you know, to, to a quote unquote civilian, everything I do is surprising. <laughs> when you talk about seatbelt extenders and CPAPs and big bathrooms and, and stuff. But I think that what would maybe take the cake for me is living in the U.S. and, and, and having a, a large bladder, and this will connect. I never fully realized the, the airplane restroom situation because I guess I've never really taken a flight more than eight or nine hours because I always connect and that's either a choice or just what I have to do. Cause I, I don't mind a connection where I can use a real restroom and just get off the plane and stretch and whatnot. But I've had clients who are doing 10 and 12 hours. And then, you know, about a year or two ago, I really started looking into the restrooms on planes and some airlines, what they do is they merge two regular restrooms when it, when someone needs it. And some new planes just have one restroom somewhere on the plane that's twice the size. So that was kind of a surprise. I never really thought airplane restrooms were going to come into play, but then they did and it made so much more sense. The challenge is when you have someone of, of great size and they're not able to hold, hold it in that long and they're just going, you know, from the Midwest to the West and that's not going to be a big plane and usually only the larger planes have the larger restrooms. So that's what I'm working with with someone now is, you know, even though you can go Chicago to Los Angeles nonstop, maybe we do want to have you make a layover. Just stuff like that. Restroom related stuff. I never thought would be as big of an issue. Well, there you go. But I think that we'll find a solution. We we always do. That uh, brings us to the end of this week's episode of Thick Radio. Sam, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thanks for having me, guys. No worries. Now, tell the children, where can they find you and travelatlarge.net or .com? Travelatlarge.net and or cruisingatlarge.com. Ah, uh, uh, right. Um, and if you are interested in the Grom of the Seas, that is the Grom of the Seas.com. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, she is websited up, but that is it for another <laughs> week here on Thick Radio. Please remember to like and subscribe, rate, review, give us five stars. As always, you can find me on Grommer and Instagram at Stanham and Twitter and YouTube at StanhamG. And you can find me on Grommer as Orpheus. You can find me on Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube as Thicky Mouse. And of course, you can find more of what we talked about today on Instagram and Patreon at Thick Radio. So until next time, Bye, fats. Bye, fats. Let's talk about it. The 
Radio is a Patreon and Anchor app podcast produced by Stan and Vicky Nuss. Mixed and mastered by Stan. Our artwork is provided by Lucky Two. Our theme song is provided by Spotify Premium.